All right, well, thanks for joining us, everyone. Uh, my name is Pat Miller. I'm the idea coach of Small Step Solutions, and this is something totally new, and I have no idea if it's going to work, but it's something that I wanted to try, and I wanted to try it because um, it has been, as we can all imagine, one heck of a couple of weeks. Um, interesting, to say the least. So the first thing I want to do is say thank you to everyone for joining us. And uh, thank you all for participating. Hopefully today we're going to learn some stuff and get a chance to talk to one another and try and get a sense of what is happening in the small business community right now. Uh, we are going to talk with Molly Sullivan, who owns Miss Molly's Cafe in Wauwatosa. We're also going to talk to Sarah Bauer from Heartland Payment Systems. She has been talking to small business owners all week, and she's going to give us a good idea of what they're saying and a sense of what's happening. And we're also, towards the end, going to open up the chat to make sure that we all get a chance to talk amongst ourselves. So make sure that you talk through the chat. Jennifer's going to watch that for us. And uh, as we get going, we'll just unmute our mics and we'll have a conversation as well. But first, I want to kind of start at the beginning. And what I want to start with is it's important for all of us to stay connected right now. And as things are very uncertain, we really don't know what's going on. Uh, talking with one another, and for some of us, feeling that sense of community to one another is really super important right now. So the reason why I'm doing this is to keep everyone connected. I also want to share positivity, and anyone that's worked with me or hung around me knows that that's what I really believe in. There is opportunity right now if we have the courage to calm ourselves and find those opportunities and take action. The people that are going to lose right now are the people that are going to panic and turtle. And I don't want to see that happen to anyone that I'm connected with. And if you ever feel that way or you're feeling defeated and you're not sure how to move forward, um, please reach out. I would love to connect with you to make sure that you're thinking positively and you're ready to grow your business as all of this settles down, no matter how long it'll be. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start with one of my old friends who happens to be uh, the executive director for news for WTMJ. Uh, Eric Bilstad is joining us. So Eric, I've been busy setting up this entire broadcast today, kind of freaking out. First of all, it's great to see you again. Uh, yeah. Can you give us uh, an idea of what kind of news broke today so we can know what changes have happened in the last, say, 12 or 24 hours? Right. Well, uh, every day it's something different, and every day there's about 15 things. So we'll see what we can find. We'll start with the number. Everyone's talking about the COVID-19 confirmed cases, right? So right now, we just heard from DHS, there are more than 100 now confirmed in Wisconsin, the majority of them in Milwaukee County. The big takeaway from that is that it includes a doctor at Children's Hospital. So now you have a couple of hundred patients and doctors at Children's Hospital now being tested to determine if there are any more there. Obviously, that's a concern. So that's the big new news that just happened here within the last hour or so. Uh, what we've learned from Madison, the state taking more measures now to slow the spread. We've had the schools now closed indefinitely. We learned that yesterday. Bars and restaurants, except for takeout and delivery. Uh, Governor Evers today is ordering that all daycare facilities limit themselves to 10 or fewer staff members and 50 or fewer children. That could become a problem for those who are able to go into work if they can continue to have childcare. So that's going to be the new one that you see facilities dealing with. Okay, can we have 10 or fewer people here? Can we have 50 or fewer children? How do you do the ebb and flow? That's one of the new ones. Uh, the state also asking the federal government for more medical equipment, seeking loans to help the small businesses. They have gotten some grant money for the small businesses. And as of now, still trying to detail exactly what that means to figure out what that is for everybody. But they are trying to get some money to help obviously the businesses in the area that can, can no longer function or are functioning limitedly. Uh, governor signing an executive order today speeding up unemployment benefits for those who have lost a job to the outbreak. So that's good news there. We did learn yesterday that they are pushing back the tax filing for another 90 days at least. And uh, we should get from the feds at some point here in the next two weeks, they're still trying to hammer this out. This is happening as we speak on Capitol Hill. The Senate is voting on several different packages. One of them includes sending money to every American. So every American or family of Americans will receive a check of some kind. Uh, if you make a lot of money, then you're not going to get as much as someone else. But it depends on the family size and the size of your salary or salaries. But every American expected to get some money here, I would say, within the first or second week in April, if not sooner than that. Uh, and I, for the most, those are the big ones that are still happening as we speak. 
So one of the big things that jumped out to me is that the tax filing deadline is pushing back as far as it is. So 90 days immediately, which is some relief for people that may owe, but also for people that are just behind, like me, (laughs) it's a a little bit of weight off right now. It's one less thing that we have to do. Right, Um, or if you're not going to get, if you're not getting paid, right, or or if you're struggling with trying to figure out how you're going to pay all your employees, one of those extra little benefits that you're trying to do anything. It's not a lot. I know a lot of people need more than that, but it's it's something we're getting there. How close do you think we are to the checks being cut? Because it seems like that was something that the president was talking about they wanted to have out in the next two weeks. Is that something that you think it's close? Yeah, I think the, the, the date that I've seen is April 6th. So okay. what would that be? Monday, two weeks from now, three weeks from now. So that's probably the likely date, April 6th. Uh, maybe sooner than that, but there's a lot that comes into play. Plus, you're talking about a lot of money. And uh, the, the, the numbers that we're seeing coming from Washington, I mean, $2 trillion is one of the packages. $2 trillion, then a couple of $250 billion packages also. So there's a lot there there that they have to figure out how that's going to get there. Plus, not only after you give the okay, there's, there's bureaucracy that comes with everything. So how it yeah. eventually gets to us, I think that is a very optimistic expectation that by April 6th, we will all get a check of some kind. So we've only got a couple more moments with Eric before he goes. If you have a question for him, put it down in the group chat and we'll make sure that we get it. I would start unmuting microphones, but uh, it's a good problem to have. We have so many people in the chats, I would never be able to get people on and off. Um, one of the things that we're all listening for is the Small Business Administration lighting up their uh, funds for Wisconsin, which it sounds like they've talked a lot about, but they haven't released the funds for Wisconsin yet. Have you heard anything on that? I know that the governor is working feverishly on trying to figure out some grants for small businesses. And the details of those, I apologize, I wouldn't be able to outline specifically for you. But they are working closely to get something for those people. And he's made some other requests as well for small businesses specifically, because I think one of the issues that the governor has told us specifically about all of this is that in order to stop this from completely wiping out our healthcare system by just inundating it, they need to shut everything down. But if you're shutting everything down, then you're basically choking off, you know, what, 90% of Americans who have some type of job or some kind of business that they're running. Um, So yes, there is money coming, how and when and how quickly and how much, uh, it's too soon to say. Now, before we let you go, first of all, thank you, Garrett Stein, for sharing the uh, SBA link inside um, the chat. That's the uh, coronavirus link for the SBA disaster funding. One interesting thing is when I looked through that, they're saying that they'll give you funding based on uh, paying wages. So if you have employees, that's going to be one of the trigger points of getting funding fast through the SBA for, for what it's worth. Right. Now, you and I have worked together back in my previous life at the radio station. We've been through a lot of disasters and emergencies. You're around the radio station all the time. You've heard the talk show hosts. Is there anything that's come through that turned your head that made you think, oh, that's that's unusual, or I didn't expect that to happen because you've literally seen and covered it all? You know, what's interesting about this one is that usually when you see a threat, or when something is uh, potentially disastrous for the country or for yourself or whatever it might be, it's easier to decipher and to see, right? So 9-11, we all saw it. We saw it in real time. We saw it live on television. This one, because you can't quite see it, it's just a different animal, I think. And we've seen a very slow progression of how Americans are dealing with it and how Southeast Wisconsin is, quote unquote, accepting it. Right. I mean, the National Weather Service will tell you over and over again that they cannot they have to make the warning three times to people who are in the line of a tornado. Tornado warning. Hey, tornado is coming. A storm is right there. (laughs) You need to get in your basement. And they have to tell it over and over again because people just won't heed the first warning. This is kind of similar in a way, but you can't see it. It's a hidden pandemic. I think I, I can paraphrase what the president said, but he said it was something that's hidden, a hidden monster or something like that, because you can't see it it's harder for you maybe to gather the enormity of the situation. And I think over time, that's what's been very eye-opening for us is how many days it has now taken for, I think, most, the majority of the area in Southeast Wisconsin to say, okay, this is a thing. I need to consider this, that, and the other. Uh, Before we let you go, I want to ask you one more question. Have you heard anything lately about the DNC convention or what's going on with it being delayed, canceled, or it's going to go on as planned? 
So the ground keeps shifting underneath the DNC organizers on that. So as of now, nothing new. But here's a couple of things just to remember on that. Uh, first off, if you recall, they still need to make $70 million as a fundraiser. They need to make $70 million more than what they have right now. I could be wrong by a couple of million, but in that area. A couple of million, there who cares? Of, yeah. right? There are not a lot of people throwing money around right now, obviously. I mean, it, the Dow and the markets were killed again today. The, the market now is at the same as it was when President Trump first came into office. So if that tells you how much it's come back down. Um, so that's the first issue is that they are not making any money. They are not making any money to be able to fundraise and be able to actually put on the event. So that's the first concern. The second is the expectation that they just won't even be able to get this set up in time. When we are all under you know, this self-quarantine that we're doing right now, it, that takes away a lot of the organizational efforts that are happening. So there are more and more, again, speculation, not going to say that it's going to happen or not, that are wondering if it will be like it's always been. Is that even possible right now to have a DNC like it has been four years ago, eight years ago, and whatnot? I'll tell you this, the, the one thing that could give you some hope is that the radio TV gallery people, they're the ones in Washington who ask for your credentials and give you accreditation and allow your station to go and cover this event. They're still working as normal. They're asking me all these questions. I got to okay. file out a whole bunch of social security numbers of all of our staff and all these people that are going to be covering it. Yeah. They're still doing their thing. So they expect it to go on, but I would be shocked if it's exactly what you have seen four years, eight years, 12 years at every other DNC. I, I'd yeah. be very shocked if it's the exact same process and event that it's been all these other times. Uh, the executive producer for news for WTMJ, Eric Bilstad, longtime friend. Thanks for giving us exactly what we need today, man. I appreciate it. All right. All right. Uh, let's move on. Uh, we want to talk a little bit closer about some other things that are going on. And we're going to turn our attention uh, to one story that's really impacting everybody is we can't go out. <laughs> we can't go anywhere. And now restaurants and bars are having problems as far as being open and accessible. And one of the first uh, restaurateurs that I wanted to reach out to was Molly Sullivan from Miss Molly's Cafe. Uh, Molly, do we have you there? Are you with us? Yeah. Excellent. Well, hi. I called you uh, earlier this afternoon to find out how things were, and you sounded like I caught you in the middle of everything. So <laughs> yeah. how are you doing? Catch us up. Um, yeah, well, we're just completely making it up. I mean, we, um, like, like you said, we can't be open for service as normal. So we are one of the fortunate businesses i think in that our model is already geared towards to go and we already have the infrastructure in place for to go orders um but like the majority of restaurants do not have that so they're just flailing um we we also have online ordering which we've had already for two years so that's been a huge thing like we our numbers yesterday and today are lower than they normally are, but only by like a quarter of Wow. Them. So we're hanging in there, but it's just yeah. to say, I don't know how long, you know, I, who knows what will happen or if they shut us down completely. I don't know. But um, we also came up with this idea to do dinner meal kits. So every night of the week we're doing a dinner meal kit for a family of four for $40 and they can be picked up between four and 6 PM or we will also deliver it to you. Um, so that has also generated a significant revenue over the last 48 hours. Um, so that I'm hoping, you know, that will keep us afloat, but I have, I was just on the phone with unemployment insurance. I've had to put, all of my staff on unemployment, um, except for two of them. So we're just running with a crew of two people, one working out front and one working in the kitchen from, you know, all day. So um, it's really, it's very stressful and our employees, you know, highest earners to begin with. So um, when they're, they're living paycheck to paycheck, they're, they're just, a lot of them are just really stressed. Your name is on the door. You have people that show up every day trying to live your dream and keep the doors open. And then here comes an announcement and your doors are closed. Yeah. What was that like? How did that feel? I mean, um, 
Sunday was just, I think it was just kind of like the stages of grief or something where you're just in complete shock and you don't want to admit that it's real. And I just felt kind of paralyzed, but then it was like, okay, this is happening. We need to deal with it. We need to figure out something to do. So, um, we're just dealing with it and it's, I'm just like, just like, I got to get through today. I got to get through tomorrow. And you know what? People will say like this might last till September or something. You're like, just I can't even think that way. <laughs> no. like, this, I gotta just we gotta just get through today, and as long as we can still bring in some money and just cut back on, you know, like we I canceled my uh, sales tax payment that was supposed to go out at the end of this week because that's a significant chunk of money that if I can hold on to and pay my employees or pay my cost of goods um, cause they're all going to cash on demand. Um, you know, for like our paper goods and produce, they want checks right when they get there. And mm -hmm. terms. so in order for us to stay open, we need to have that money on hand. Yeah. Yeah. Then you don't even have the structure or the uh, uh, hard goods at least yeah. uh, a question from C2. Uh, talk to us about how unemployment insurance is responding for your people. Are they responding quickly? Are they, are they being responsive? Yeah, actually, they were incredibly helpful today. Um, the The wait time was long, but once I got someone on the phone, they were very understanding, and they are, um, the state is doing a, they normally have an eight-week uh, waiver for job searches, and they've extended it to a 12-week for where you don't have to do the job search component of unemployment. So at least that'll give everyone you know, some income. Um, but I do know that we're not a traditional restaurant in that our, our servers don't make two thirty three an hour, which is what table service restaurant workers make. So even if you do apply for unemployment and you're a server, you're getting a fraction of two thirty three an hour or mm. whatever is claimed on your tips. And oftentimes um, servers don't claim all their tips. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of times the servers that I've known and back when I was a server, back when I served dinosaur bones for, you know, <laughs> meals, but I always remember that people that are servers are in the middle of doing something else. They're training or they're studying or they're a this and a server to help pay the bills. Are there any hidden talents or marketable skills that your servers may have that some people in the small business community could gig them out for like someone's good at graphic design or someone's good at media or whatever it might be. Is there anything like that? Because that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get people together is try and find solutions for yeah. the people that are hanging around. Yeah, I know. Well, one of my employees has a pretty significant art gig on the side. Um, and I know I was talking with someone yesterday who works for I think it's called like Imagine Creative or something. It's a mm -hmm. nonprofit in Milwaukee that's trying to do kind of what you're saying is kind of co-opt people's talents and um, source out their talent for mm -hmm. them. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of my employees are, they're in grad school and teaching, um, but for my full-time employees, I mean, this is, this is their, their job. So helping the people that are out, right? If you have any skills that you would like to share, I've got a person that's out or they're, they're not working as much and they're really good at this. Does anyone have hourly work for them? People inside Brand Crafted or inside Brookfield Chamber, we might be able to take you up on that. But let's talk about helping you. You see people say online all the time, uh, oh, you want to help a restaurant, uh, buy gift cards. Does that really help? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a short term solution, but I mean, this is just unprecedented that it's like, yeah, any money in the door will help. So we, and even further from that selling e-gift cards because the plastic gift cards actually cost us money. So um, buying e-gift cards is great. I mean, if they're redeemed months down the road, it's better to keep our doors open now than then not at all. Um, but for, for my business personally, I think these dinner kits are going to really be able to float us. Yeah. So can you talk about the dinner kits? I'm going to share my screen again, because I put that sure. up so people could see it. 
Um, and can you see that, Molly, my screen? Yeah. Okay, so can you just walk us through what you're doing here and how we could come by and get one if we wanted to? Yeah, so uh, basically every night of the week, even though we're closed on Mondays, we're going to do it seven nights where it's a different menu. Um, it's meant for four people. So it's $40. Um, you order online off of our website, and then you can come in and pick up anytime between four and six, or we can deliver to you. We're trying to do all the deliveries between four and five because I know a lot of families with kids, you know, they want dinner early. Uh, so then we can deliver for eight bucks to you. And they're all just really kind of like family friendly oriented meals, quick to reheat. And we make it all from scratch here. So it's a win win for you because you know we've all got a lot going on right now and then for us we can we can get some cash on hand okay uh thank you for sharing that um and for giving us some background on how it's going there and i hope you didn't feel singled out but uh, we had a relationship prior to this and i just wanted to make sure that you know who do i know that runs a restaurant that's in the brookfield chamber and you were the first person i thought of so thank you so much for sharing outside of stopping by and picking up or pre-ordering and then picking up our own meal kits. What else can we do as a community to support you and the other restaurants that are out there? Yeah. I mean, I think just spreading the word that we're here and we're doing business. Um, we're open seven to three and we're doing takeout food, coffee. Um, so just, you know, making it aware that we're here and then for other restaurants just you know the locally owned ones they're um they're really hit hard so just you know mm -hmm. doing the same yeah one last question i was gonna let you go but you're not done yet darn it i can ask <laughs> you another question uh it sounds like you were ahead of the game with your catering business and the pre-order online and having some of those ducks in a row that are pretty darn valuable right now is there anyone in your restaurant network that's really up against it or anyone that you think, oh man, if you're going to go out to dinner, I mean, obviously we want to support you, but is there anyone else that's really up against it that we might want to consider a visit to? Yeah. I mean, um, I, I used to work for Black Shoe Hospitality, which is Maxi's mm -hmm. Blue's Egg and Story Hill. And they, you know, they're, they really want to do right by their employees. And I know that they're scrambling to put together, to go menus and kind of limited menus, but so, you know, supporting those, supporting the businesses that support the community already. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those corner places like good kind in Bayview and um, odd duck in Bayview, they're, they're trying to put together menus that make sense for takeout when it's not something that they're traditionally doing. Yeah. Well, uh, good luck and everyone on this call and everyone in brand crafted, we got your back. If there's something we can do, Please don't hesitate to reach out because uh, we're cheering for you and now I'm hungry. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. thanks, thanks for, for coming for your support. We appreciate it. Uh, good luck to you. Before we check in with uh, Sarah, uh, I want to remind you that we're starting a list for these kinds of calls. And I don't know if we're going to do this again. Maybe we are, maybe we aren't. Um, but I've started a list. If you text the word biz, B I Z to 414, 240-1315. And if JB, you could put that in the comments, that would be awesome. Biz, B-I-Z to 414-240-1315. That way uh, my robot will pick you up. And anytime we have one of these calls, I'll shoot you a text to say, hey, we're going to do another call. Let's all get on and say hello to each other. So uh, Molly, thank you for coming on. I really do appreciate it. All right, let's go. I wanted to talk to Sarah Bauer because she is the knower of all people. And uh, Sarah, do I have you unmuted here appropriately? Yes. All yes. right, great. Hello. Hi. We had a chance to talk yesterday. I love smiley faces. This is we're, great. We're Hello, all here. Everybody. I like all the right. random cats or people or children <laughs> popping in. It's great. <laughs> it's fun. Uh, we had the chance to talk yesterday, and I found myself, like, reflexively saying, oh, my gosh, Sarah, what's going on? What are people saying? Because you've talked to – I mean, how many business owners do you think you've talked to this week already? Uh, I don't know. I can't – I've – dozens and dozens it's like my phone died twice yesterday and i have a brand new iphone it's, wow. it's been crazy it's been so, crazy so partly payment though. systems i mean you're in the business of knowing people tell us what people are saying like what's the common theme 
if there is one? You know, I think right now, and I think you're hitting the nail on the head with this, people are, you know, there's change. And we as humans don't do well with change. I don't care who you are and what your background is, change is scary. So you've got that, that, inner, that inner struggle. But what we're really afraid of, and I really think this all comes down to, is connection. We are humans like to connect. So we talk about the restaurants and the bars and the schools and the activities, and these are slowly being pulled away from us. And you may have reflected on this already, or you might be having a little bit of a, a, a bubble pop in your head going, oh my God, isolation. Like I'm losing these connections. So thank you first off, Pat, for having this. If anything, I hope that each and every one of you have a little bit of connection in your day. Um, in connection with each other, because I think this, this, this right here, I've been actually on zoom calls all day long. <laughs> so this is like my sixth one. Um, yeah. so thank you. And I really actually think this would be a good idea to just have a hangout from time to time. To time. Great. What are business owners saying? Um, so I work for Heartland payment systems. For those of you who don't know what that is, we do payment processing. So we process credit cards. So that means we do work very heavily in the restaurant and retail space. We work with automotive repair, small business, small to medium sized businesses is really kind of our bread and butter. Um, specifically with the restaurant industry, and I, I don't want to be redundant in anything that Molly shared with us, but that absolutely is a huge, a huge piece of what's going on. Uh, we have um, restaurant tours that are worried about making payroll. They're really worried about their employees, really, to be honest. Most of them are, you know, yeah, their bottom line is important, but I want to make sure my employees are taken care of. Um, so that that's really where their, their heart is. This is their business. This is their livelihood. This is their baby. But this is also their family's income. This is their this is their college, college tuition payments. This is everything. So um, you've got a combination of, of the monetary arm of it, but also just that uncertainty. So I've actually found myself listening more than talking on the phone. Um, I've had some people very neutral. I've had people in tears on the phone with me um, from all walks of life. And it's been, it's, I kind of coming at this with, I'm gonna serve through positivity and I'm gonna lead through positivity because there's so much negativity going on right now um, that really I think just that human connection and, and listening and hearing each other out has been it. Um, I did have an opportunity to go out into the field uh, most of the day yesterday and uh, serve by, by patronizing some of these restaurants and businesses. I was at a bakery, um, buying donuts for my kids for breakfast. I was at a, a pizza parlor getting a pizza for dinner. Um, I had an opportunity to connect with some business owners. I've been on the phone and in the office most of the day today uh, putting through lending deals. Uh, we do lending as well. And it's, it's been, it's constant. So opening lines of credit and, and just kind of, kind of working, make sure that working capital is there so they can keep their business running. Um, I've actually had business owners company with creative ideas as to how to still operate in this environment. You guys want to hear a really good one? I thought this Ab was kind of cool. Absolutely. So I get a phone call today and they're like, ah, so does everyone have to sign receipts when they run a credit card? And I'm like, well, there's some rules around that. We start talking. I said, well, well why, why do you ask? Well, I'm just, I'm nervous about everyone sharing the pen. Okay. I hear you. I hear you. I said, well, you got Apple Pay, and we talked about how to set that up and, and how to use that so you don't have to touch anything. I said, do you have a box of uh, pens with your brand on it? Oh, yeah, I got a whole bunch of them. I said, why don't you just give them a pen and say, take it with you every single time you sign for the credit card receipt. Yep. What a great idea. Now Love you've got it. marketing out in the field. So if you know of anyone who prints on, on promo items that maybe their business is hurting right now because the yeah. schools are all kind of in, eh, have them think about that. What an awesome idea. So every time they sign, they just take a pen with them. I'm like, right. I love it. <laughs> so let's do a one through 10 scale. So okay. one being it's the greatest day of my life. 10 is the sky is falling. In general, on the panic scale, are people at a one or freaking out, what would you say from the people you've interacted with? I'd say they're, they're kind of in the middle. Um, okay. It's in general, in the middle, I've had a couple people, we've, we have had a couple of restaurants call us and say we're shutting our doors. It's been very minimal though. Um, been busy getting everyone online ordering today. Um, uh, Heartland rolled out a free program for the next 90 days. So I've been busy, you know, helping online ordering uh, mm -hmm. for, for businesses that need to be able to do that. I mean, Molly, I don't know if she's still on the call, but she, that's awesome that she has that already. Many restaurants don't. 
yeah. um, or don't even know how to navigate that world. So I'd say it's probably like a five, to be honest with you. I don't, okay. it's interesting. There's actually a couple business owners that are acting like nothing's going on. There have been, and maybe that's the, the healthy way to look at this. Just don't let that come into your life. So it's yeah. definitely been a wide range. So before we let Sarah go, we're going to open up to group chat here in a minute. So if there's something that you want to talk about or a question that you have for Sarah, drop it inside the chat. And that way we can bounce around and talk about some other things. Uh, Cause I don't want this to go on uh, too long, but I definitely want to make sure that we all get a chance to uh, reflect and ask questions of one another or just share how we're feeling. Um, so you're out seeing all of these customers, you're out there patronizing businesses. What is your outlook? What, what do you think? is going to happen in the near term? Like, where's your gut right now? I think there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of this. I think what this is, what this is doing is it's allowing us as business owners, it may not feel like it right now, especially if you own your own small business, like it's going to allow us to diversify. It's allow us to get creative and how we sell and how we market ourselves. It's going to allow us to look at how we've come on social media and in these kind of environments, how we're showing up. Um, and I've, I have a very strong feeling it's going to create markets that weren't there before. I mean, if you look historically, when we had a recession back in 2008, all the different types of industries that came out of it. Um, I like to think that, you know, while I, I too, you know, change is scary. Um, I really feel that from a marketplace perspective, that's going to come. And on a personal scale, I think it's bringing families together. I really do. I really think this is an opportunity for families to be together, to reflect and actually have those conversations. So I'm going to lead with the glass half full here, um, <laughs> unless told otherwise. And um, yeah, if I can be of service or even a, a lending year to any of you, just let me know. I'd uh, be happy to bounce ideas off you. Um, and if I can't help you, I mean, Pat's a well network person. I'm, I'd be happy to connect with the right people. Well, I appreciate you sharing what you're seeing and what you're hearing. Uh, it was valuable because when I talked to you yesterday, uh, I called Sarah as a resource for one of my clients and she was boom, right there for me. So uh, uh, always great to have you as a resource and good luck with what you're doing. And of course, uh, keep us all in the loop on what we need to know. Okay. Will do. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, so if there's anyone that wants to share something else, we can definitely open up the floor uh, at this time. Just drop something into the uh, comments and that way we can do it. Uh, if not, we'll just wrap up the recording and make sure that everyone gets a vibe of what we were going for. Uh, for me, uh, I'm in the business of helping people and talking to people and understanding what goals they're trying to achieve. And the folks that I've been talking to, it seems as though they're going through waves. They're going through waves of things are great and I've got a new idea and you know what, I'm going to do this new thing and that's exciting. And then, you know, it could be as fast as an hour later then they're at a 10 and the sky is falling and they're thinking, uh, my business is ruined. Everyone's canceling what's going on. So as I said early on in the call, what you're going to hear from me now and until we get through this is where's the opportunity in this chaos. I'm going to try and keep you positive. And that's kind of part of my nature is I like coming up with ideas. I like, like Sarah said, I like finding ways to make something work that didn't work before. So for me, um, fun is the wrong word, but challenging. Challenging is what this is. Uh, so before we uh, let everybody go, I do want to thank Carol White and the leadership team of the Brookfield Chamber of Commerce. Uh, they wanted to foster an environment where people had the chance to talk with one another and not feel like we were isolated. Uh, that's really the Brookfield Chamber difference, as anyone that's a member knows. It's a great big family that also does business. So thank you to her for... Uh, allowing us to promote this through the Brookfield Chamber so we can connect some more business owners. Uh, I do appreciate that. Also, the members of the Brandcrafted Social Club that have been my fam now for a little bit over a year. It's nice to have everybody on the call. It looks like we have a few questions coming in. Um, Heather has a question. My concern is for my seasonal employees counting on work coming up. How, if at all, can unemployment help them should this work get canceled? Uh, I'm not sure if there's anyone on the call that can speak to that, but that's definitely something we can circle back on. Um, while we see if someone can answer that question, let's go to Elsie. One thing I'm struggling with is how to let folks know that my service is a great option during this time, but I don't want to come across as icky. You know, Elsie, I love talking to you in the first place, so let's unmute you and, and talk to you just for a second, okay? Uh, do I have you, Elsie? 
Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Oh, man, we see a beautiful still photo of you. You are a sexy beast. Look at that. That is a gorgeous picture. Um, all right, so you don't want to be creepy. Tell me about being creepy. What do you mean? Yeah, I guess what I mean is, you know, obviously – there's a lot, there are opportunities that present um, themselves during times like this, but um, there's a, a fine line though of being that person who is, is, is seen as exploiting it or, um, you know, taking advantage of the, the situation. So, um, so I'm kind of struggling with how do I, how do I present this message, right? Because what I do is, is a good option, is, is lower cost and it's a way to really, um, to really stand out and get your message out. Um, but what I don't want is to have that that um, that sentiment attached to my brand. So um, I don't know if I'm maybe if I'm the only one that's there, or are other people finding it um, a challenge as well? Well, I'll give you my answer. If anyone wants to weigh in, uh, raise your hand inside the comments, and we'll, we'll unmute you and let you talk. Um, the way that I'm positioning it, I had this exact same conversation uh, with one of my clients yesterday, who felt as though oh, I don't want to be seen as a profiteer. And this person who we all know, and I will not embarrass this person, we talked through, okay, well, what do you mean? And they said, well, you know, in this time, uh, I'm offering this service, which turns out to be exactly what everyone wants. They offer a service to get people close to their customers. And I said, you're solving a problem for them right now. You're not a profiteer. You're enabling them to accomplish a goal. And there's a difference between having the vaccine and charging a million dollars for it and providing a service that's really valuable. And right now, Elsie, with what you do, oh my gosh, this, what we're doing right now is the type of thing that you do through podcasting by connecting someone with their audience. And oftentimes it's people that don't know how to do it on their own. So the fact that you could give someone still a platform to talk to their audience and their prospective customers when they can't go see them in person, I would think your product is more valuable now than ever. That doesn't sound like profiteering to me. Okay. What do you think of that? Does that make sense to you? It makes sense. It, but, but like I said, I, I guess my struggle is with the messaging, right? How do I message that? Sure. Well, let's uh, get Brian in here. Uh, Brian wants to add something. Brian Dennis, uh, you say you've got something that you can add for Elsie's question? Yeah. Hey, Pat. First of all, appreciate you having this this call today. This is this is great and getting everybody together. Um, so I lead a couple different lives on the sales side and whatnot. And I've really been spending my time just reaching out to my network, just thanking them, thanking them for uh, what they're doing throughout the crisis, thanking them for um, the individuals that are still working in a lot of the retail stores. Uh, and my network has been my network has been really. Um, clear on, I don't want any sales going on to me, not at this time. And a lot of these guys have different roles right now, right? They may have had a regular role and in this crisis, they're doing something else. So I have been spending my time just being a thought partner and, and just, you know, thanking them for, for all they do and kind of putting the sales piece on the background. Yeah, that's good, actually. Uh, and being a, a thought partner is definitely something Elsie would excel, uh, excel in as well, is helping people understand what messaging do they want to send to their customers. Uh, so maybe that's one way you could lead, LZ, by checking in with folks that you know. Uh, if your people had the chance to have a conversation with you, even though you can't go see them in person, what would you want to talk about? And that could be the start for uh, a podcast or even just using what you do to give someone the opportunity to test it. Something like this, I don't know if this thing is going to end up being something we do a lot of. It's just something we're doing right now. So maybe it's a way that you could serve uh, and just treat it as that. And then if it turns into something else because someone got great results, then terrific. That's, that's something you can weigh in on. Uh, I do want to bring Nikki on. Uh, Nikki is touching on something. Thank you, Brian. And thank you, Elsie. I do appreciate it. Uh, let's go. Uh, Nikki is here with us. Nikki Witek, uh, marketing goddess. So digital interaction is off the charts right now. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, hang on, hang on a second. Sure. Can can you hear me? Yeah, you sound great. Hold on a sec. I'm I'm losing my. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, I'm sorry. What did you ask me? <laughs> well, you were asking. Uh, the conversation in the chat was about email marketing ramping up and how good digital marketing is doing right now. Can you yes. touch on that real quick? Yeah. So um, obviously, us being in a 
uh, right now a very digitally connected society, right? Um, there's, we're, we're having to shift our focus as to how we reach people, right? We're, we're not able to network and go to chamber events and networking events and things like that. So, you know, I had a few sleepless nights over the weekend thinking, wow, um, what is this going to mean for my business? People are going to scale back on their marketing. They're, you know, they're not going to need me. And it's actually been the opposite. People are ramping up. Um, a lot of my clients that are maybe doing email marketing, twice a month are now saying, nope, we need to do more. I need to stay connected. Um, I need to show my face and my brand and get in front of people more often. So um, I think it's really key right now is social media and email marketing. Um, I think you had even mentioned on your page that open rates are through the roof. Um, and I went now and I checked and you, you are absolutely correct. Um, they're skyrocketing. People are doing less. So they're paying attention more to their email. They're reading through things. So it's a perfect time to really start engaging with your audience through email, right? Um, so, so in, in, again, it, it, things are going to continue to shift, I believe. But we've got so many avenues that we can take, right? And if it's digitally, then email is a great way to be able to do that. Um, so I can't stress enough how important it is. And it's a budget friendly way, right? So you're not having to spend a ton to put in ads. If you already have the platform, you've got, you've got the avenue to reach your clients, right? It's just make sure that you're doing that now consistently. So yeah, that's, that's a really good point. It's a great free digital reach because you've already earned the relationship. As long as you've got the distribution and you've got the list, get after it. I had one other digital marketer share something with me that made me go, huh? And this might apply to Elsie's question and Brian's comment, which is, I don't want to see like I'm chasing people that don't want to buy my product. I don't want them to think bad of me. And what the digital marketing person said, we were discussing uh, pay-per-click. And they said, well, if you're doing pay-per-click, that, that's intentional marketing. They're seeking out your product in the first place. So putting your money on pay-per-click means they're already looking for what you're trying to sell. You're not being creepy at all. You're just showing up when they're searching for whatever you're trying to sell, which I thought right. was like a total of, duh, of course. How did I not think of that? That was a great way to put it. Yeah. You know, the other thing I want to mention is um, blogging as well. I mean, blogging is if you, if you don't have to be a fantastic writer, but it's also a really good way to get organic reach at no cost, right? Mm -hmm. Write a 400 page blog about something that reaches your audience and it Oi. helps your organic SEO and it's totally free if you do it yourself, right? Yep. So, yep. yeah. Well, here's, uh, Nikki, thanks for jumping in. I do appreciate it. I wanted to make sure that we got something out about the increased open rates and digital interaction that we're getting right now uh, because it's, it's quite a thing. So here's what I wanna do. Uh, I am, so grateful to the Brookfield Chamber and so thankful to the Brandcrafted family for getting together today to have a little bit of a conversation. Uh, we're recording this entire um, episode and we're going to get it back out on those social media channels so people can see kind of what I had in mind. And your trust and interaction today is very meaningful to me and I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you did not sign up for the text alert, text biz to the number, and we'll have Jennifer put that back in the chat again. Uh, to make sure you'll see it because I don't know if I'm going to do this every day, every couple days, once a week. I have no idea. So I'll be interested to hear your feedback offline when we're done to see if we should do this again because I wanted to get my network together and our network together and just have a conversation. How are you doing? How are you feeling? And I'm trying to put out there as much energy as I can of stay calm, carry on, Think big. Like, what can we do now to grow the business either in the middle of it or so when we get out of it, we're stronger and better than we've ever been. So with that, get on the list, listen to the uh, distribution channels that we have. And if we end up doing this again, I, I hope you'll come back and be a part of the conversation. And also, I want to know, who do you want to hear from? Because I really like the idea of hearing from Eric about the news or hearing from Molly about how the restaurants are doing. You know, who else do you want to hear from? Because as a network, we know a lot of people and we can get almost anybody to come on and get interviewed. Uh, it's a way that we can get the information that we feel like we need. So please send me that feedback as well, if you would. So with that, we're done for today. Thanks for coming to the Small Business Rally Point. I'm Pat Miller, the Idea Coach from Small Step Solutions. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.